Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. All right, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Angie and Steven's podcast. Grass Alone. Grass Alone podcast. I'm sorry. I, I'm i like in the middle. I don't know if I, if like, I don't know if I love it or hate it. Or intro. Seriously? Yeah. You don't I, hate it? Why would no, you no, hate I, it? No, I didn't say I hated it. See, now you're putting words in my mouth. Let's play that back. <laughs> I don't know if I love it or hate it. I don't understand your statement then. <laughs> Can you at least appreciate my honesty? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't because I don't understand what you're saying. All right. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you. I just don't know how I feel about it. Can you use more words? <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about our intro. Okay. So let's let's do this. Ten. I love using the scales. Ten is you love it. It's the best. Like it's just the best ever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, one is you hate it. Where are you? Five. You're a five. Or a six. Five and a half. Really? I love our intro. I'm, um, I mean, I might be biased because so, I I made our intro. So the reason I I say that is because sometimes I'm like. Like okay, that's like that's cool that we have that. Uh-huh. It, it's kind of become like like a theme for the podcast. Yeah, that's why I want to kind of like do an official like recording of it, mm-hmm. where like the vocals are right and everything's right. I just I think I feel like when we do it live, it's overly loud in my head or in my earphones. In oh, my maybe headphones. you should just turn your earphones down. So maybe I should just turn my headphones because when down I hear, for that part. Yeah, when I hear on the pod, like when I'm hearing yeah, it back, it sounds, it sounds fine. fine. Yeah, it sounds perfectly fine on the on the podcast. Maybe it's because you but, hear but I, yourself singing and you don't, you're but, not used to it. Mm, no, nah, I don't know. That's sad. I, um, I learned to let stuff like that go. But, um, but, but maybe also because I listen to it at like double speed, I don't. I <laughs> Listen, it I put it. Different. Okay, all right. I'm gonna. Okay, this is not about what we're gonna talk about today. And I know we were told not to do this um, by a listener, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just for right now. Hey, it's your podcast. You can do what you want to. Yeah. So uh, I was told that my laugh. I have a weird laugh. Facts. When <laughs> seriously? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And so they they said that they heard the the episode mm-hmm. and um that they heard my laugh and yeah. then and then I'm like what? And then they stopped listening? No, 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 no. And so oh. I go back. I I this is a couple a lot, yesterday or the day before. I was listening to the podcast and I was listening with Paula and I I'm like I got to try to find that cuz I know I have I know I have a chuckle. Like <laughs> yeah. I have that one. It's not that one. It's there's it's there's another one in there somewhere, but yeah, um, I tried to listen to it and I had to put us in double speed and we sound hilarious on double speed. Really? Uh, I, and I don't hear that anymore. Paula noticed that you talk slower than I do. Really? Yeah. It's interesting because when um when I'm listening to the to the podcast on double speed, it sounds normal to me. Well, cause and you- it's so funny because. There's a there's another podcast that I listen to. Again, I listen to every like videos. The only thing I don't listen on double speed or watch on double speed is like movies, you know, because right. you need it for effect and music because mm-hmm. it's kind of redundant to listen to music at double speed right. if you you're not gonna enjoy it. So so everything is pretty much double speed. If I can't get double speed, it frustrates me because I know it's gonna take me twice as long as it normally does to listen to take this information in. So I've trained my brain for that. Right. So, so if you listen to things in double speed long enough, it won't sound funny to you anymore. Um, but my point is, is that that podcast that I listen to at double speed, when I try to listen to it at normal speed, 
it it is like slow motion. It it feels like slow motion yeah. for me. And uh it, again, it just it it makes me think about um uh, you know, I Einstein Einstein's theory of of relativity where it's like the faster you move the the slower things go and the 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 slower you age and etc and all of that. Um so, but anyways, Anyways, that was just a little a little sidebar commentation. Yeah. Commentation. Okay. That's uh, okay. new so I talk too slow. So maybe should I talk fast? <laughs> <laughs> we should listen to that part in yeah. double speed. Should I talk fast? <laughs> All right, that's about as fast as I can come All up right. with words. You need to stop distracting us. We need to yes. talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. So, so let me tell you guys that Jesus is awesome. Um, I was talking to my sister off mic about an hour or so ago, and I was just, uh, you know, I was telling her about um, the brother that she never knew. And it just, it really, like, I don't know, God touched my heart because it made me think about how wonderful God is, like how gracious he is mm -hmm. and how far his grace reaches that, you know, I, I was telling you about a part of my life where I went through moments that I thought I was done, like, like, not just in the sense of, you know, life, freedom and all of that, but I was done, period, like, I felt unreachable. Yeah. That's how I felt. And again, it's, to me, it just, it, it blows my mind uh, that that God still loved me through that and that, you know, God has forgiven me, uh, you know, of, of all those sins and, and just that whole aspect of my life where I was dishonoring him. Yeah. And, you know, I can only equate that to what probably the prodigal son felt like, you know, when he came back home yeah. where, you know, he was probably in his mind going, Man, like, 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 I think we talked about it, right? Like, like if his, if he would have ran into his brother on the way home, mm -hmm. his brother would have told him, dude, like, don't show your face. Like, right. dad's mad. Like, what, how could you do this? Um, but, but thank God that he, you know, he went home and, and, uh, and then, um, and then his father received him. And I can only like, I can relate to that because, because that, that was me. That was mm -hmm. me. That was. Like, I knew God. I had been to church my whole life, and I knew, l let me put it this way. I didn't know God. <laughs> yeah. I knew of God. I knew about God, but I didn't know God. And um, it just, again, it just, uh, it just really melts my heart, and, and, and it just makes me so grateful that, that God was God. <laughs> Amen. Um, yeah, so, so I can only imagine the prodigal son coming back and thinking, man, like the whole walk home, however far that was, the prodigal son was like, man, what's dad going to say? What am I going to say? How do I even start? Uh, do I apologize first? Do I wait to get scolded first? Um, is he even going to want to see me? Is Am I even gonna have the opportunity to to apologize? Yeah. Um. Uh. You know, should I should I maybe try to fix my life first before I before I go back home? Yeah. Like, wh what am I supposed to do? You know, and and you know, it, it's I guess it's that it's that point where he had hit rock bottom, where he's like, I don't know if he ate or he was getting ready to eat with the pigs. He's thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. Where he's like, man really like is this is this where my life has gone like what what am i doing like there's nothing left to lose yeah there's nothing left to lose and i'm just gonna go for it and if it doesn't work out then i'll see what happens right and uh it, i i guarantee it was nothing like what he expected nothing right. nothing like that and so i felt the same way and it's just a beautiful thing. Man. Yeah, the crazy part, one of the crazy parts is, is not only does, not only does the father accept him, but he like gets up 
Yeah, it and goes all out. Yeah. Listen, so so back to that, right? So back to my life. Like, uh, you know, I had at one point I had uh lost my job, lost my marriage, lost my friends, uh I mean everything. I was I had lost that and then and then I was lost on top of that. Right. Um and then to where I am now, you know, I there's still things that aren't haven't been perfected. Right. Um, but but the most important thing is that, you know, God has I guess perfected me in the sense of uh righteousness, you know, the righteousness the righteousness that I that I carry is because of God and it's God's only. I like I that's why I mentioned it before. I can't take credit for for anything. Yeah. Like, I can't. Um so when people thank me, I'm just like, "Man, I I'm sorry. I you we got to praise God for that because I can't take credit for it at all. I didn't save myself. I didn't get myself out of those holes. I didn't, you know, keep my wife. Yeah. Uh that wasn't me. Um I I didn't uh, go from losing a home to purchasing a home. That wasn't me. You know, I didn't go from no job to getting one. That was not me. That was all God. And man, I just, <laughs> that's why, that's why I try to honor and worship him in any way that I can. Yeah. So anyways, that's kind of like little, little part of my story testimony. Yeah. Amen. Um, and what you were saying reminded me of, I, uh, this preaching I was, I saw earlier, it was just a snippet. It was one of the reels on Instagram, but it was this pastor talking about how, um, we often hear people talking about, uh, when one sinner repents, the angels rejoice. Oh, yes. Did you see that? I, I, I've seen the verse. Yeah. Or, so, or the preaching one of the, or both. Yeah. So he was saying, no, I think the verse. He was saying that the enemy wants to trick us to make us think that angels are rejoicing, but that's not the case. Um, and he's like, when you look at the verse, if we read the verse, something different is happening. And interestingly enough, yeah, it's the same chapter of the prodigal son. Wow. Um, Praise God. So, I'm man, like... that's <laughs> OK. <laughs> Hold on. Let's pause for a second. That's not a coincidence. Amen. So listeners, pay attention, please. Yeah. So I'm going to read this real quick. Um, it's Luke 15, same chapter as, as Prodigal Son, uh, 1 through 7. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. So it's beautiful because so the, the, the preacher is like, if we look at it, the angels are not rejoicing. You know, if we look at it in the context of the parable, who is the person that's rejoicing? The shepherd. It's the shepherd. It's the man who, you know, who's tending the sheep and lost one and finally found it. Wait a second. So that whole angels, like the whole heaven celebrates when one sinner repents. That's not in the Bible. It is in the Bible, it isn't is. it? I mean, it's here. It's there. No, but isn't the actual... Um, the actual reference is what I'm talking about, right? You said the preaching was about heaven rejoices when one yeah. sinner turns. Yeah, this is the... But that's a parable that doesn't directly say that a sinner turns is what no, I'm ver saying. No, verse 7 says, just so... Oh, okay, okay. I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Oh, that's So right. he, he wasn't saying necessarily that the angels aren't rejoicing. But the focus of the rejoicing is the man. It's the shepherd. And so we, we, it just misses, because it ties in with the, with the prodigal son, 
that yeah. it's not angels rejoicing. The father is rejoicing when one sinner repents. He's not he's not sitting back on his throne and being like, oh, OK, that's great. Like I knew that was yeah. going to happen. While, while the angel, <laughs> yeah, while the angels are, are rejoicing, he's like, he's no, he's getting up. He's like super excited, super rejoiced that his son, his daughter that once was lost has now come to him. It's like that's amazing. Because yeah. so, so, so many times we look at God or we look at Christianity as this angry God, you know, just pointing at, at, at us and wagging his finger at us saying, how dare you? Or why did you do this? Why did you do that? But then he's, he's no, he's waiting with open arms. He's yeah. tugging at our heartstrings over and over again until we come back. And when we do, or till we, you know, come come to him at all, and when we do, he's just... Yeah. Finally. Um, so I just I, I told you I'm going through a study of Romans and uh, get, I guess what chapter I'm on. I'm going to say, let's see, that was I'm going to say chapter three, maybe yeah. two. Yeah, actually three. Nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been on, on this thing for weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so with Pastor Jack Hibbs. And so today, the one I heard today was the end of of Romans three. and. Anyways, he was just making a reference that what Paul was talking about there is that, um, you know, uh, not that Paul was talking, but that that the way that Paul paints this picture uh, and that the Gospels paint this picture of Jesus is that he's out. Yeah, he's out there like, you know, with with his hands extended out, kind of like a open, open palm mm -hmm. pointing at people with both hands. But at the same time, he's pointing, he's beckoning them with his hands, like, come to me. Like, you're messing up. Come to me. Right. Like, I am the way, the truth and the life. Yeah. Like, you want to be free from addiction. You want to be free from depression. You want to be free from whatever it is that's keeping you a slave. Come to me. Yeah. Like that. And, I, and I've seen so many testimonies of people that were bipolar, that were, uh, again, addicted to drugs, porn, you name it. Mm -hmm. And and then they do like this whole uh, uh, TikTok or Instagram video, short video of their life before mm -hmm. Christ and then after Christ. And some of these people, the testimony speaks for itself yeah. about God's grace. It's just, it's amazing to me. And I think... Going back to what we've said in the past, the biggest mistake that we make is that we we take, you know, we take God's standard um, in every sense of the word, whatever mm -hmm. God's standard is of goodness and morality and all of that. And we make up our own. And so we take his and we dissect it and we remove the parts that convict us and only keep the parts that convict the people that we are watching. Right. And so that's the mistake that we make because now we're just not looking in the mirror like scripture calls us to. Right. You know, if scripture says that if we examine ourselves, then, you know, we're kind of in essence, yeah. we're stepping in the right direction. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, I think the other awesome thing is just. How much of the Bible. Obviously, we have Jesus, we have the cross, which is ultimate grace um but how much of the old testament shows that grace as well like all yeah. over like uh mm. i think too often and we've said this before how uh, you know what <laughs> just a side note i think one of the our most used phrases is, is we've said this before <laughs> facts man this is true um anyways but, but the reason we say that is because we might have listeners <laughs> that we haven't heard we are subliminally uh, encourage, encouraging them to go back and listen Ooh. to those episodes where we've said that yeah. in the past. Yeah. <laughs> also, there's a, interestingly enough. <laughs> all right. All right. Do anyway, I say that a anyway, lot? Moving, I do say that a <laughs> moving lot. Moving on. Interestingly uh, enough. Interestingly enough. So interestingly enough, in the Old <laughs> Testament, uh, we just see a picture of, like, uh, we've said, <laughs> well, back to what I was saying. We've said this, that uh, a lot of times we think that the, God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the Old Testament. The, that the last you mean New Testament. Old Th Testament. That the old is different from is the different new. from the new. 
Um, and we're like, because in the Old Testament, we see an angry God, and then he becomes more gracious. New Testament, we've said that that's not the case because uh, God is a just God. So we Amen. see his justice being served served in the Old Testament uh, in many different ways. And we see it happening in the New Testament through Jesus. Yeah. Um, but I, like, looking at the Old Testament, like, I'm starting to see the reverse reverse of that where we see his grace well not so much of a reverse but i am seeing his grace so much more in the old testament because when you look at the patriarchs of israel you know that patriarchs of the bible like if we look at abraham who um i mean he slept with his uh wife's servant you know to to bring about god's promise when we look at david who murdered and and he uh he he plotted he he, he cheated yeah. on yeah he he there's just so much but not only that but these are the patriot like the chosen these were God's chosen people this is what you know later on Jesus descended from this lineage and it's like god these are the people you chose to have Jesus come through that lineage like we look at Jacob like Jacob is Jacob becomes Israel, right? But yeah. before he becomes Israel, he cheats his brother twice. Like I saw <laughs> out of his blessing. I I saw the meme the other day where it's like uh uh Esau asks, you know, Esau comes in, he's hungry, and he's like, Jacob, give me something to eat, and uh, Jacob's like, just I will, just give me your birthright, and you see um, what's his face? From Anchorman saying, well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Why yeah, you don't send me that? I'm sorry. But anyways, but we like that's. And then he he goes. Rachel helps him. Is it Rachel or Rebecca? I don't remember which one. I don't remember which one. But um, no, it's Rebecca. And I, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I don't remember the wife's name. Um, But Jacob's mom helps him cheat to take the blessing after that and but israel comes from that like that's who god chooses and that's amazing to me because that's god's grace because it makes me wonder god why did you choose this specific why did you choose them and then the fact that david um so we know david's story how crazy that is but you know through david's uh through david's mary um through david's uh marriage to Beersheba or Bathsheba, sorry. Yeah. Um, which was Uriah's wife, who he killed. Through that comes Solomon. Like through through all yeah. that sin comes Solomon. And th you know, if we know later on through Solomon, eventually comes Jesus. Yeah. Well how crazy is that? And that's just well, God's grace over well, and over and over and over again. And I'll bring up one more example too that I learned recently. Um, we know the story about Cain and Abel, right? Right. What does Cain do? He kills his brother because God was honored with Abel's sacrifice mm -hmm. and not honored with his for the simple reason that um, Abel brought his best, his best yeah. of his best and sacrificed it to God. And Cain just brought like, like the stuff he didn't want. Yeah. And made the sacrifice. Yeah. And then he was offended. And he was so angry with his brother that he killed him. All right. Cain finds a wife and has a son. Do you know who that is? No. Enoch. Enoch? <laughs> Enoch. Come on now. That's pretty crazy. Enoch, one of the two that for now that has not tasted death. Yeah. Incredible. That is that okay, so that's something that confused me because I remember reading that and yeah. we had well, a whole descendancy yeah. where Enoch is one of them and then we see Cain and uh Cain and his wife also have Enoch, so I wasn't sure if they were two separate Enochs. No, it's or the, the same, same Enoch one. because that's the Enoch that becomes Noah's great great grandfather. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's amazing. Yeah. Like that. 
right? Enoch never dies. He just, God it, just it, takes it, him up. It just, it, and you know, my a, brother thinks he's going to be one of the, um, what is it? Witness, witnesses. But that's another story. Not me. E, e, uh, no, I, it's oh, not no, Enoch. Kidding, it's Elijah. Kidding. It's Elijah and Moses. I think it's going to be Elijah and Moses. Could be Enoch. No, sorry. That was me. Um, and then, you know how long Cain hated his brother, though? How long? As long as he was able. <laughs> wow! Walked right into that one. I loved it. Had sure. I told you that joke before? I think so. I, I wasn't thinking, you know. Yes, it was good. Um, yeah. Man, you know, enjoy that because those are few, okay? <laughs> There's very few times I walk into your jokes <laughs> like that. It's one of my, my dad jokes. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, God's grace is all over yeah. uh, his word. And, and I think the enemy is so quick to just just attack our minds because we are we are gods and so sometimes that's the only way we he... be, meaning we belong to god not that we are gods <laughs> so, right thank you i i i, I kind of hate that thank we you. have to clarify thank but you. but <laughs> thank you for clarifying that's good because yeah. <laughs> right, right. you said it and for a second i was like wait what that's heresy <laughs> we are gods <laughs> blasphemy um so yeah uh, the enemy tries to tries to trick our minds, and that's that's you know yeah. that's why you have to we have to renew our minds constantly because yes. sometimes he wants to bring us back to our past, and God's like I've already forgiven that. And like it's 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 in the past. Here's the thing too that I've learned recently is that re- repentance is is a daily, an hourly, uh, uh, second by second, minute by minute yeah. thing because you know I. I've caught myself where um, I'm like, I, let's say I lose my temper or somebody cuts me off in traffic and I'm like, like, I don't, I don't like go like, you know, and say all these curse words anymore, but I might say, ah, oh, you stupid jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, oh God, I'm sorry. Like, please forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. Like. Yeah. He's, this person is made in your image. And, and, and you know, and that's the kind of, uh, I think, attitude or mindset that we need to kind of pray for. Right. Uh, because, you know, we'll never do it. Yeah. But we need to pray for that because when you're in, when you're, when that's your mindset, when you set your mind on God, when you are honoring the greatest commandment, which is love your God, right? Yeah. With all your heart, soul, body strength and mind right Mm -hmm. um when you're doing that it's automatic like you the holy spirit immediately yeah like like kind of jerks your chain like like the dog whisper Mm -hmm. you know caesar milan like when he goes yeah it's like the holy spirit is doing to you you know what i mean it's interesting because uh, like it makes me think of what you said before where you know how the bible says uh, in James, that it sh- the word should be a mirror to us that when we see it, we don't just walk away from it. But so, like, I don't, I don't know that my intention in reading the Bible is ever, hey, let me see how I can be better. I, like, and it should be like that should be part of it. Like, let me see what I need to what. Like, let me look at the mirror. <laughs> yeah. That should be it, you know? Well, number one, let me get closer to God. Let me hear what he wants to say to me. But let me look in the mirror to see what what needs fixing. Because like you said, we so often look at other people, see what's wrong with them, and we don't want to look at ourselves and be like, what, what is up with me? And and a lot of the times I think we, we're okay with whatever is up with us. Yeah. Because we're like, at least it's not as bad as Hitler, you know, or so, or my neighbor, or right. so, whoever. Um, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's true. But I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. I feel like you're about to rap. I yeah. Lost my train of uh, mm. I lost my train of thought, but yo, uh, no, I'm not going to do that here, but, <laughs> um, no man. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, you know, the Holy Spirit snaps you out of it. 
and um and you become like it's like it's like a confirmation that you you're walking in the spirit that you are submitting to god's will that that which is really all we got to do um but but repentance is is a daily thing you, mm -hmm. you you can't you just can't think that you accepted christ one day and boom that's it, and that's it. um and, and we're not saying that you know you need to do like works it, this is not work-based uh yeah uh, we're not encouraging a work-based life uh what we're encouraging is that you know the true repent the true repentance the true initial repentance um goes hand in hand with the submission to god and mm -hmm. you walking in the spirit and then bearing that fruit yeah and you may or may not notice it it's probably likely that you won't notice it until somebody points it out to you if you're truly submitting to god because you know that's not that's not your your motive. Yeah. Your motive is not to get praise. Your motive is not to check off the box like we've said. Your motive is not to see how much more you can do to stack up cool points with God. Yeah. It's none of that. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to have people in your life that are pursuing Jesus. Because I think so often like we don't we don't see things in ourselves like no. we think we see it all and we don't yep um and we i mean studies have shown this right yeah studies have shown that we think that we are better uh, at drawing than we actually are that yeah. we're better at taking pictures than we actually are that we're better at fill in the blank than, yeah. than we actually are so we should have this desire to and and the the, the problem is that we let me finish my thought <laughs> we should have this desire to be uh, among people who love Jesus because in doing so if they really love Jesus and they really love us then when they see something that's out of place that's contrary to the word they're going to be quick to correct us Amen. and to do it kindly yep. um but the problem is number 1 we don't surround ourselves with those type of people <laughs> yeah uh often and number 2 is uh we we don't like correcting each other yeah. Like it's it's an uncomfortable feeling to correct and much more to be corrected. Yeah. Um and so maybe that's part of the problem where where it's like what I don't want to be around that because then I'm going to be confronted with you yeah. know my my own stuff. And interestingly enough too I think all <laughs> <laughs> You heard all it. Right. I, I just heard it. Oh man. I'm not I, saying I'm I, not saying I don't apologize. say it. I apologize. <laughs> don't apologize to my listeners. <laughs> Uh, who are, you know, counting do, the interestinglys doing, enough, doing orange juice shots <laughs> to my interestinglys enough. Uh, <laughs> you want to say it again? <laughs> I almost do, but I now I don't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> mm. Oh, um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I mean, listen, um, we we're at a we're at a moment in the history of humanity where we have to take serious our worldview whatever that worldview is you have to take it serious if you're an atheist you you cannot help but wonder what is going on right now why are there so many natural disasters why is the uh why are politics around the entire world all over the place why is society why are societies all over the world falling apart why is why are people not caring about each other why are people running around like the law does not exist why are all these things happening yeah. why are we trying to live in a made up reality where we think that men could be women and women could be men. Yeah. Why 
I don't understand. So, so even an atheist has to, has to be asking themselves this question. So we have to take that serious and be like, okay, even as an atheist, you have to say, there's something, something's there's going on. something's going on. Right. And if something's going on, then your worldview is false because by definition, uh, if, if God does not exist, then there's no purpose to anything. And, right. and no morality. And, and, the, and ironically, the chaos makes sense. Right? Yeah. Interestingly enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have to take our worldview seriously. Now, I think I, I want to encourage Christians even more, right? Because so many of us call ourselves Christians that we need to really get in God's word. I'm running into people at Publix that are looking at my zombie shirt from ATF from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It says Ephesians 6.12 that they're like, hey, I like your shirt. And we get into a conversation and they bring up end times. Yeah. And I don't even know if, you know, they're Christian or not. Everyone uh, across the world has to be feeling some type of way, at, you know, at different levels, depending yeah. on, you know, what your worldview is. But to the Christian, listen, <laughs> if you didn't take God serious before, yeah. if you are a bootleg Christian who says you're a Christian but n has never lived like one, or you only take the parts that make you feel good about the Bible and Christianity and you ignore everything else, you know, you need to check yourself because, man, it, it's undeniable. Like, prophecy is unfolding. And to me, that, that in itself proves God, proves God's existence. Yeah. How could something that was written 1,500 years ago, 2,000 years ago, be coming to pass? Yeah. How, how is that possible? You know, you were talking earlier about God's grace and everything. And and I wanted to mention, now that I remember, I don't want to forget. Um, but, you know, how wonderful, how the difference between God of the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, people see a difference there. Mm -hmm. And how the more you get into the Old Testament, the more you find God's grace. Right. Here's a perfect example of the Old Testament uh, God. God of grace of grace that right. nobody seems to notice. And it's in Hosea 6, uh, verse 1. And it says, Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us. And that's to say that an all-loving God mm -hmm. is an all-just God. A perfect God who exercises his wrath will also exercise his love and his mercy and his grace. Amen. And that's Old Testament right there. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah. So going back again, going back to the to forward. In the beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning. Anyways, going back, like Christians, come on, man. We we need to we need to take our Christian life seriously. Like there's no more games. Like the time for games is over. And like I told you off mic before the, 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 the podcast today, I, there's nothing in this world that's material that I care for. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that I don't care for stuff. But what I mean is that if I lost it today, I would I would still be okay. Like I like it's not going to hurt me. Yeah. Like it's really not going to hurt me. It's yeah. not even going to bother me. Um and and that's where I think we need to be right now. Because the closer we get to the return of Jesus, the the more out of love that we need to be uh falling out of with the world, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, I think uh I know we'll we'll talk about this more in depth 
uh, in another episode, but there was a part in. Uh... Sorry, I'm sorry. I don't. Want, I didn't want to cut you off, but I'm going to. Okay. Um, you know, I'm gonna forget what I'm gonna say. Well, say it like three times in your head now, so okay. that you don't forget. Okay. 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 Um, but you know, I'm likely gonna forget. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I just remembered a quote um, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about and the mindset that we need to have. And it's from A.W. Tozer. And he said that whatever you think about God, that is how you live your life. Hmm. Think about how powerful that that's, statement is. That's wow. Whatever you think about God, that is how you live your life. And I'm getting goosebumps right now. That's crazy. Because that was like, if I, if I, again, going back to what my life was before Christ, I thought I was a Christian. How dare I? How dare I think that I was a Christian? Yeah. And, 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 and that shows. That's why when you, you're seeing people that are, you know, they, they have a certain kind of life. And then you see that radical change. Well, guess what? It's because the, what they think about God has changed. Yeah. And anyways, uh, I just wanted to say that. So I don't, I don't want you to forget what you were trying to say, but I feel Sorry. like you're taking notes. Yeah. Um, uh, whatever. I'm writing down what you just said. Whatever you think about God. Is but how you live your it life. It kept changing it to hod. Um, <laughs> that's how you live your yeah. life. Okay. Um, all right, just so you know what I've been repeating, where I repeated in my mind three times is dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. Um, so awesome. there is, <laughs> uh, there's a video that uh, we want to encourage you to watch. I think we'll probably dedicate an episode to it later on. It's called What is a Woman? Oh, a yes. Episode. Why didn't we talk about that well, today? I honestly, I haven't finished Because the video. God had other plans Amen. is your answer. Amen. <laughs> or should be. <laughs> right. Um, anyways, there's a part of the, of the. Uh, documentary. documentary where this uh transgender woman or i don't know what and this transgender person is being asked a question um and the interviewer gets to the point where he's trying to help him understand uh that his logic is just doesn't make sense yeah um and so basically the the transgender man's response was whoever believes the way christians the way christians believe they're like dinosaurs like mm, th that's that, right that, that kind and that, of and that's thinking... a transgender woman just to be clear okay sorry I, yeah i wasn't sure um that 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 type of thinking that a man can't be a woman and a woman can't be a man again we're not going to get into that what i want to focus on is the fact that he said that that type of thinking is like dinosaur prehistoric like, prehistoric like that and that's where we are today where yeah. the things that, that you know this this uh this nation was founded right you know that where where in god we trust right where christianity was was a part of it all and now we're not we've we've gone so past far bibles and and god being taken taken out of schools and uh, church and state being separate, we've gotten to the point where, you know, Christian Christians are being expressed as you know bigots and and dinosaurs and you know they're they they just they're just uh, we're just prideful people that that we we just don't know what we're talking about. Like that's the point where we are, and it just feels like that for me makes me feel like Jesus' return is closer. Yeah, like the fact that that's the, that we're we're the ones that that don't make sense and that's just the beginning of it like it's it, i feel like it's gonna keep getting worse and i don't know like, at what point jesus is gonna take us home um but we're just gonna see it get worse and worse where we're christians are thinking of or, or thought of more poorly and probably treated more poorly as time progresses let me just read a little something from today's newspaper but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, 
without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid what? such people. Uh, before we get into into that, just a quick side note. One of my favorite parts of this verse is, has always been this whole list of horrendous things and in the middle of it, disobedient to parents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like let's not forget the kids. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. not forget. <laughs> let's not forget that the children are sinners too. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Um, and that was for reference. That was 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. Yeah. And there's more to that. And that, that was by in the, the newspaper? <laughs> I say today's newspaper. No, I, I say that because the Bible is like if you Christians, if you seriously or just anybody, if you seriously read the Bible, um, you you will see that it, it's like reading the newspaper. Yeah. Like this is prophecy. This is the living word of God. And that's one of the points I wanted to make earlier is that we need to read the word of God yeah. and, and we can't read it. Like we would read a regular storybook. This is the Bible is, by the way, and this might shock some people. Maybe they might not want to listen to us anymore. The Bible is not a book of stories. <gasps> I need to get that a sound effect. <laughs> it is a book of one single story. Yeah. It, one protagonist, Jesus Christ, mm, nothing else. That's good. That's what it's about. Um, But we, we, we cannot read it like a regular book that we pick up from uh, George Orwell or C.S. Lewis or whoever. Like, this is not one of those th books. This is, this is a living word, a prophetic word. And we have, to, we have to really study it. We can't just read it. And a lot of Christians, I was one, I had a problem, you know, with figuring out how to read the Bible because I would read it and I could read the same chapter five times and still not understand a single thing. So, um, yeah. So I just encourage everybody, if you have questions about that, hit us up. Maybe we could do, I think we did another uh, a podcast where we maybe talked about how you should read your Bible, where to mm -hmm. start, et cetera. But maybe we could do something else that's a little bit more detailed and also point you into the direction of some really, really great resources to, so that you could learn how to read and study your Bible. You can't just read the Bible. Um, it's important that you understand hermeneutics, which is the study of or the science behind interpreting the Bible and understanding mm -hmm. it. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that, which some, some of those points are uh, context, history, Genre. Right, you're getting into the episode. Sorry. Oh, Context. I just, I, it's a preview. It's a preview. Context, history, genre, and authorship, and, and, and who that was for. So, um, you know, if, if you didn't know that about the Bible, then now you do. And so I encourage you guys, you know, maybe do your own research or again, just ask us questions. Amen. Okay. Praise God, man. I thought I was going to go through the episode without remembering what I forgot. Yeah. But, you know, the Holy Spirit just bloop. So that was that the up. introduction. Do you want to get into our topic for today? <laughs> 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 that wasn't even what we were going to talk about. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But you know what? Praise God for that because Amen. God, this is this is part of God's plan. You know, um, there's some somebody who's listening or or will listen to this whenever that is going to hear this and they're going to be convicted in one way or another and God's going to move their heart and and that's it that's you know that's what we want you know that's that's God's will you know Amen. God's will is that uh you know everyone comes to a saving knowledge of him that everyone comes to repentance and so um I can't remember the exact verse because I I know I'm paraphrasing here but um uh, something I think it's in Second Peter, but, um, anyways, yeah, God, it, it's not God's will that anybody should perish, and so, um, you know, we're just submitting to God, and, you know, He's doing what He does with us. Amen. 
Um, that's that's important. Trusting God, submitting to God, and um, and prayer, man. Prayer is so important. There's this um, there's this video. Um, there's this video that uh, it, it's kind of funny because uh, it, it's it's something along the lines of uh, you know, it's not that you shouldn't. Uh, it's not that you need Jesus to this, but is that you need Jesus to go to Walmart, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, you've heard it, right? Um, and that, and that's, and what I, what I picked up from that is that you need to have, again, your mind set on God. If your mind is not set on God, everything else falls apart. Yeah. You know, that's why that's the greatest commandment. Yeah. If you don't put God first, how are you going to love your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, there there needs to be that understanding that there is a need for Jesus every day, and that's that's the that's the thing that it's so easy to forget. I think just because we're sinners and we're human, um, and you know we 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 fail, that we get we obviously we we love that Jesus died on the cross to so we can live with Him for eternity, um, but we forget that Jesus wants to be in the thick of it with us every single day. Um, and so we forget that we need, even even though we're already saved, we need him every single day. So we have to come to him every single day, like prayer, yeah. reading the word, every, every sing- even, it, even when more, we, even when we don't want to. But I like, find it, doesn't, my- it doesn't matter if I don't want to, yeah. because ultimately it goes back to, I don't, it doesn't matter what I want. I yeah. need Jesus. Like there's times, yeah. like I remember, um, through that season of, of anxiety that I've talked about before, like I got so anxious that I could like food that I loved no longer tasted good. Yeah. Like I, like even Chick-fil-A, like it's like, I don't even, I see it. I know that I typically love this food, but I don't, I don't care for it. But because I knew that in order to survive, <laughs> Angie needs to eat food. <laughs> I ate it. Yeah. And so that's how it has to be with uh oh, yeah. prayer and analogy. the word of God where it's like I I see I see that the word is on my nightstand. I know that I can I know that I have the ability to pray. I don't want to right now, but I know I need it to survive. Yeah. I know I need it to renew my mind and my, yeah. my spirit. And so I I got, it doesn't matter what I want. And I've had those it's moments. It's what I need. I have had those moments and here's a suggestion that could help some of you. When I, when I know I'm in that moment that I need to honor and glorify God, but I, but I don't want to, and I'm trying to find an excuse to, to not do it because I'm too tired, I'm too sleepy, I need to wake up early, whatever the case is, I ask God, God, help me. Help me with this feeling of yeah. not wanting to honor and worship you. Help me because I... And and I always say this the 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 what Jesus said at at the when he had his prayer moment at Gethsemane, yeah. and he's like he's like the 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 flesh is weak but the spirit is willing, mm. and so I'm like God help me put my flesh to rest That's like good. help me put my flesh to rest because I want to I want to pray, but but I don't want to yeah <laughs> I want to but I don't want to and so help me with that. And it, and it's in those moments when I pray that that I get up and I pray. Amen. And and that's with everything. That's with sin. Mm-hmm. I've gotten woken up at two o'clock in the morning, wanting to sin, and I'm like, God, help me with this sin. Or I wake up with a with a bad dream. God, I rebuke this in your name. Like, g- get this away from me. Yeah. I don't want it. You know, I want your peace in my heart. I want your peace in my mind. And um and those tiny prayers is is really they God comes through. And and I and I think that you know, not to take away from what scripture says that, you know, pray without ceasing. What are you doing? I'm just enjoying this conversation so <laughs> it's much. Not, it's not like it's not that it's not like like scripture says pray without ceasing, right? Mm-hmm. And that that doesn't necessarily mean Pray for three hours straight. That right. doesn't mean pray until your needs your knees bleed. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean pray until you pass out because mm-hmm. you haven't you skipped lunch and right. dinner. It 
it, you can pray for that long and praise God if, if the spirit moves you to do that. But where I, where I find meaning in, pre, in praying without cease, ceasing is when I'm in those tiny prayer moments mm -hmm. where I'm like, God, I know that I'm about to get in my car. Just help me. Help me just walk to my car <laughs> without tripping. Yeah. Like, just help me to gracefully get in my car without tripping because yesterday I tripped and my neighbor saw me or whatever the case, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, just help me. Like, I, I, I don't, I feel heavy this morning. Help me walk in with, with a smiling face, you know, to my job. Like, what does that, what does that prayer take? Like three seconds. Yeah. Three second prayers. Like it doesn't have to be hours and hours, uh, you know, like, like the Jews at the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's, I don't think that's what it means. Again, if the spirit moves you to do that, because I know there are certain times where spiritually that's what God's calling you to do. Do it by all means. Mm -hmm. Do it till your knees bleed if you have to. If yeah. The, if the spirit moves you to that. Yeah. Because I, it's, I guarantee that if the spirit moves you to that, you're not going to even know that you're bleeding. Yeah. You know, um, I, I heard a story once. I don't remember where, where um, it was uh, a family or, or somebody in the house that they prayed. They, they used to pray so much on their knees that when uh, people came over or they, they uh, new owners came or whatever, they found the indentation of the person's knees on the floor. Yeah. I don't know where I heard that. You, you heard it from Matthew. I think Matthew said it. Is that what he yeah. is? Really? Oh, man. <laughs> he's, man, he's, he probably has a big smile on his face right now, huh? You think so? Well, Maybe. we're recording it now, so he can't. He Not can't right now, but right now, like, you're, Matthew, you're listening to this, and you're <laughs> smiling. And I love you, man. <laughs> Um, so, well, thank you, Matthew, for that. Um, I mean, listen, I like to give credit to people, you know, where credit where is due. Credit is I, 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 I don't want to take credit again. Um, but anyways, um, yeah. So, so like, again, if God calls you to make indentations on your wooden floor, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. But I, I think again, uh, at least in my life, that's where I find meaning in that scripture is that, uh, and again, as I as I grow closer to God, the more I find myself doing that. Yeah, it's incredible because nothing bothers me. Like nothing bothers me. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens at the Walmart or at the Publix or wherever I go. Nothing bothers me. That's good. And so I think that's what is also meant from, you know, living in the spirit of God and the mm -hmm. joy that he gives us. Like, that's what that means. Right. Like, could my life be better? Absolutely. But, man, I'm happy. Like, yeah. I'm joyful. I, again, I'm joyful. But, you know, I'm happy, too. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not always happy when I'm joyful, but I can say that I'm always joyful. Amen. Because, you know, God has given me that. Amen. And so, you know, I thank him for that. I found the verse, by the way, um, where it talks about, Anyways, I'll just read it. Uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you. Now, I'm going to pause there before I continue, because it's important to note that this is talking to the people who may be scoffing you because they're saying, Jesus isn't coming anytime soon. It's been 2,000 years. Where is this coming? Like, Scripture talks about that. I think uh, First or Second Timothy talks about yeah. scoffers will come, and they will ask you, where is this return of your Christ? Where is yeah. the return of your king that you keep blabbing about? Yeah. And, and, and the reason is not that he's being slow. It's not that he's not coming. It's that he's being slow because... You know, I, I'll repeat it. Yeah, sorry. I have this image of the son and the father in conversation, and and the father's like, "Go get your bride, go get your bride," and the son's like, "Like, 
just give them one more minute. Yeah. Give them one more minute. Ooh. Give them one more minute. Because, you know, a minute in, in God's uh, understanding of time, because he's, he exists outside of it. Yeah. Um, in fact, let me go back a verse. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Amen. That reminds me of uh, when Abraham is with the Lord. We're pretty sure it's possibly Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, uh, he's, the Lord's telling him, hey, uh, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I, th- I thought Gomorrah and then I thought of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm like, is that right? <laughs> Uh, you're, you're still right, by the way. <laughs> right, right. Her name is also Gamora. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, yeah. So he's there, about to. There might be a, a a teaching that could come out of that. By the way, <laughs> he's uh. T- there's a teaching that come out can come out of any anything. <laughs> um. But anyways, he's talking about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham's. But God, uh, if there's fifty people in that place that are righteous, would you just not destroy it? And then God's God's like, yeah. And he's like, but there, if there's 40 people if there's third like he keeps yeah. going if there's yeah. five people <laughs> yeah didn't he start with a hundred yeah, he started with a big number and but it's like it seems like a very redundant question but but like it just reminds me because i feel like abraham had a love for these people most yeah. likely um but it just reminds me of what you said that jesus is like just just a little longer let's let's just give him a little longer yeah um and it's just it's just amazing uh I know we had talked about uh, in one of our chats about the um, Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel, yeah. Uh, and how, you know, he, um, you know, he confused everyone yeah. uh, to talk different languages, and and we're like, hey, wh- why is it that, um, why is it that that's happening? Uh, and it's actually, I said, a conversation that was happening with Matthew again. Uh, and we, we were basically talking about it and we, you know, something that I said was, uh, well, it's possible that God was trying to be patient because he knew how powerful they would become. Um, and you know, how much sin would come, come from that. And he would then have to destroy it. And then where Matthew was like, well, yeah, there would have been, you know, what we now know as the new world order. And I'm like, that's crazy. So, so it's possible that in the tower of Babel, God was, God was confusing them to give us more time. Yeah. Because had that happened then, the we new, we wouldn't have known. We uh, this podcast would not be happening right now. Yeah, the world as we know it would have been, uh, burned to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, man. That's yeah. That's great. Um. Yeah. That's that's the image that I get of, of you know Jesus talking to the Father. And saying, I know it's time, but just one more minute, one more minute, and one more minute in in the eyes of God, yeah, you know, is you know months, yeah, days, and you a couple you, years. I can imagine all these names are in his heart of people who hasn't, Everybody. who haven't come to know know him. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, man. I'm thinking of them now. I'm thinking of some of them now. Yeah. And yeah. again, I, I, our prayer, um, our prayer is that, you know, I've said it before that the people that we pray for become the people that we pray with. Yeah. Like Amen. I, I really like that is, like honestly, if I could have one wish, be granted to me, it would be that. It would be that that God grants yeah. me that. that and, that's it. That's yeah, all and, I want. And something that we we were saying off mic uh, as well is, like, obviously, the only reason either of us are right here, the only reason either of us, um, you know, are following Jesus is because God chose us. You know, is because of God's grace. But something we also talked about is, like, we don't know how many people have whispered our names. Yeah. Yeah, that you know, like before we like uh, like you, you, before we were even born, how many people were were already like I I know our parents and other people were probably praying yeah. for us and and as we grew up, how often did, did they pray for us and how often did other 
uh, adults pray for us that we would come to know him. Yeah. And it's like, you know, sometimes we get frustrated because we see that the people that we're praying for don't know Jesus, but like he's done it before he can do it again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you said that to me today, um, it really touched my heart because it's true. I didn't, I never thought about that. You know, I, I was telling you how God's grace saved me from, you know, from potentially ending my life, ending my freedom, mm -hmm. ending so many other things. And you, and, and you're like, but also people were praying for you. Yeah. Um, and that just brought other people to mind. And like, like, God exists outside of time. So yeah. it's not just people who prayed before us. It's people who, who prayed for us now. Like yeah. he, like I believe that he's saw those, he's seen those prayers. Cause I know yeah. like before, like I've, like yeah, I've God's before, time is not linear. Like, like I've ours. prayed for you, and I've prayed for Javerlin, and I've prayed for 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 people. But and God's not like, well, like He knew my pray, He knew our prayers before we prayed them. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I just, I just, I all I can do is thank God that that you know He's had mercy on me and that He's shown me love and that and that He's a personal God that I that I know. Um, that, you know, he fills me with joy and, and he forgives me. He forgives me for my, he forgave me for my past sins, but also he forgives me for my sins all the time at on a daily basis un until my last breath, until my glorified body. Um, he, he has forgiven me. Yeah. He has forgiven me. I don't have to say he will forgive me. He has forgiven me. Amen. That's what Jesus did. Amen. And so that's what Jesus did for whoever's listening right now. You know, he died on the cross. He didn't have to. He chose to. He chose to live a sinless life to pay a debt that we owe God that we could never pay. And he took on that punishment that we could never take. That's how hard of a punishment it is. Like, I don't think death encompasses the, the wrath of God entirely. Right. I, it just doesn't. You know, scripture says, don't fear the one who can kill your body, but to the one who can kill your soul essentially yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe literally that's what it says yeah um i mean those are some strong words you know um i i don't think there are words to describe that but like we said in hosea 6 1 god's wrath the flip side of that wrath is god's love Amen. and the same way that we might punish our kids for jumping on the bed when the doctor said no more monkeys jump on the bed uh is is the same is the same kind of love that god shows us when he lets us go through certain hardships that are possibly designed to get our attention to yeah. snap us out of it to wake us up from thinking that we are woke you know yeah. what i mean it man i'm i'm telling you God is good. Amen. God is good. And, you know, we can take a break and just keep going. <laughs> but, <laughs> All I, right. but I think I think now's a good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys can find us at ChristAlonePodcast.com. All of our handles are Christ Alone Podcast, except for Twitter, which is Christ Alone Pod. And our number is 407-796-2881. That's 407-796-2881. Feel free to call or text um, your questions, suggestions, or prayer requests. Um, and that includes, you know, how do I read my Bible? Where do I start? How do I, you know, study this Bible? Yeah. How do I study God's Word? How do I get to know God? And, and, you know, we might just point you in the direction 
and the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Amen. So, um, and again, if you, you know, if you're not, I'm not a believer or if maybe this is something that somebody has shared with you, and you're listening to it for the first time, understand that, that God loves you, that Jesus died for your sins. He paid the debt so that you wouldn't have to. Um, he lived, he died, he was buried, and he resurrected on the third day as it had been written hundreds of years before Jesus even walked the earth. So he fulfilled those prophecies, he fulfilled those promises, and his promise is also that if you believe in Jesus Christ uh, as, your, as your Lord and Savior, that you will have eternal and everlasting life, and that one day um, he will come back. That he's building a house. He's building a mansion for you big, in heaven. Big house. And, and he's building a mansion for you. He's preparing a place for you so that one day he can come and he can just snatch you up and take you so yeah. that where he is, you may also be. Amen. So we love you. God bless you. God bless.